Our is day 15. March 31st, 2020. Day 15 of this Luzon enhanced community quarantine. Metro Manila lockdown, state of calamity, curfew, 5 p.m. COVID-19, worldwide pandemic. The Chinese bat research virus fucking up the, the entire earth. And I'm confined here to my spot. Currently can only venture out so that's what I was told. Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And then yesterday, somebody said it. I, I don't know. Last <laughs> sort of credible word I got was I can only go out three days a week now. President, President Trump. Good morning. Good morning. So, uh, my buddy driving a tricycle. So the, uh, the U.S. moved their shit over to the 30th. It was a press conference last night, which is kind of funny because it, the article did say tentatively at 4 p.m. Uh, President Duterte was going to address the nation. And it, it ended up going like, I don't know, 10.30, 11, 11.30. It was late. But it did go. He did address the nation. And I just assumed that they were going to announce a new date. And from what I can tell, they didn't say anything about the date. They just uh, you know, thanked a bunch of organizations and uh, I don't know, just just kind of gave an update. But I, I I was looking for a hard date for him to say it's going to be early, it's going to be on the, on the original date, or it's going to be pushed to the right like the U.S. And I, I haven't... If, if that information was in that press conference, I haven't been able to uh, determine that. I don't think it was. And then I looked at some articles a few days ago, which basically said, you know, nobody, the president and nobody has been, has said anything about extending the date. So again, not here spreading fake news. I'm just telling you what I'm reading, what people are saying, what the perception is. But as of the press conference last night, as far as I can tell, they haven't manipulated or moved the date, which for us is, uh, shit, what the hell is it? April 12th, 13th, 14th, somewhere in there. Well, basically another two weeks. We're at the halfway point right now, because this is day 14. We had a good dinner last night. Shout out to Helen of Troy for making that uh, that chicken curry. That was delicious. Changed it up a little bit. Threw down some curry. Awesome. It's a beautiful day here in the Philippines, folks. I mean, there is not one cloud in the sky. I'm listening to roosters crowing, dogs barking, birds chirping. Just the sun hitting that hill over there. I'm gonna work on my tan today, and I've been up working, trying to get this video edited and uploaded for you guys. And I'm gonna work on my tan. This is my second beer. Drinking Sam Big Light because I'm out of Coronas. Can't get a resupply on Coronas. I'm just uh, using my stock of Sam Big Light. And I figured I would do one experiment today to try to just make things interesting. And it's so hot out here. Look, that sun comes up right over those mountains at any time now. And it'll sit right over there. So basically from, you know, what, 9.30 in the morning till 5, this whole balcony is being baked by the sun. Now, it's awesome if we're out here, you know, working on my, if I'm out here working on my tan, because the ladies don't work on their tan. But if I'm working on my tan, or you got some solar panels, it's good for that. Or if Force G wants to play in the plate, uh, the, the, the hot tub, the swimming pool. So the mornings and the evenings are absolutely beautiful to hang out here. During the day, it's 100% sun beating down on this. So I said, you know, let's do a little experiment. My experiment is gonna be, 
I'm gonna leave two of my lodge. Well, I'm gonna leave my lodge 3.2 quart cast iron combo cooker in the hot in the hot sun for several hours. <clears throat> and I put both the lid and the uh, and the pot itself because the lid can be used as a as a pan on its own on its own. So I said, let me put both these things out here. Wait till they get good, good and hot, about 2 p.m. Because I'm going to tell you, the wood on this cooking table and that tile, which is a nice, cool tile, is still fucking get so hot. So I'm going to let these things sit out here and see if I can't fry some eggs on them. I don't see why I can't, because I guarantee you these things are going to get hot. So let me, let me show you. Let me take a look here. There you go. So if you're not familiar with what I cook with, on basically a nightly basis this is the uh, lodge manufacturing 3.2 quart cast iron combo cooker and it's manufactured in uh, South Pittsburgh Tennessee it's an American product but you can get them here in the Philippines and so you can use this is the lid oh shit it's heavy folks so that's the lid to it, right? So you pop that lid on there, it's the lid, and you can also turn it into a Dutch oven, which I do from time to time, just putting coals on top of that. But then the good thing about this thing is it's set up where you can use the lid as a second pan. And that's kind of why I like it. Every, everything fits together, and I, I didn't need to buy two pans. It's just perfect. So this was, this was my one one pot solution to uh you know to being able to make a dutch oven cook on coals i got a lid and i can i can do two things at once if i need to so today i'm just gonna let this beautiful day i mean check this out there ain't not one cloud in the sky and that sun is going to be coming up any moment over those hills over there you can see the sunshine is already getting in the street. And then I'm going to let these bad boys sit out here. I'm maybe till 1 o'clock. i got to finish this video, get it uploaded for you guys. And There wasn't really much going on yesterday, so it ain't that exciting. And I'm going to try to fry some eggs. Maybe I'll put some eggs in here. See if I can fry some strips of bacon over there. I don't know. I've seen videos of people doing that shit before. Uh, but I think with this cast iron and it's hot it's just a straight beat down sun on these pans I think I'll be able to get a tune out of this trombone and I don't even have to fire up the damn charcoal to do my cooking now see this gentleman over here toting that big ass log well two of them toting wood because they're cooking on wood folks uh, Mas family they still cook on wood and my personal preference is to cook on uh, charcoal. I mean, if we're in a village, we use wood, but here, I love cooking on the charcoal and just setting this guy right on the coals. But today, we're gonna use good old mother nature. See if that sun, see if I can cook me a meal with the sun, the power of the sun. What you think? Think I'd be able to pull it off? Okay. So. <laughs> I want to tell a story, and uh, well, the first part of the story is a sad story. Uh, country music singer, songwriter uh, Joe Diffie uh, died a few days ago from uh, complications from COVID-19. I think he was 61. Hold on, let me turn this water off. I'm filling up this hot tub. It's filled up. I had to cut it off. But yeah, Joe Diffie died. I think 61 years old. If I'm wrong on that, I'll correct it on the screen. But I believe he was 61. He had sent out a message that said he was being, uh, you know, treated at a medical facility for uh, uh, the virus, COVID-19. And he passed away, folks. And, you know, back in the 90s, Folks, the 90s was like my era. It's when I you know, first started going out and hitting honky tonks. Going to all these concerts and living 
in Atlanta, Georgia, folks. I mean, we had some great clubs, great concerts. I mean, it was just the country music scene between Atlanta and Nashville in the 90s, you know, with the line dancing. I mean, everybody was in the clubs back then. I think the 90s, you know, going out to uh, country, country music type clubs was sort of like the disco era of the 70s. I really do, because it, it's what, whether you were into country music or not, everybody was at the club Wednesday night, ladies night, you know, Friday night, Saturday night. I mean, it's where everybody went, whether you were a real cowboy or not. You know, most dudes are fake fucking cowboys, you know, they're, you know, work a cubicle by day and then at night they'd put their shit on, you know, cowboy hat. Uh, Wranglers and, and roll out, you know. But anyhow, that was the scene back then. And Joe Joe Diffie was in the mix. You know, had a bunch of good songs. He was touring. And in Atlanta, maybe it's still around. Hell, I, I don't know. It's been years. But there was a... Um, there was a bar called Mama's Country Showcase, and it's over in DeKalb County, not too far from the DeKalb County Jail. I think it's off of, is it Memorial? Shit, I can't remember. All I know is I'd get in my truck and take a big ass long drive around 285, and uh, you cut a right over there by the jail. It's a place called Mama's Country Showcase. It's like a middle, medium sized place. Now, you had the Crystal Chandelier over in Kennesaw, which was a huge fucking club, one of the biggest clubs in America. It used to be a grocery store, right? Sort of like Billy Bombs. And I guess the same people who own Billy Bombs out in Texas uh, somehow are connected at some point. It started out as the Crystal Chandelier. Then it became uh, Cowboys. But folks, back then, I'm telling you, if you went to any of these clubs and you didn't get there early there was no fucking parking i mean you were there were cars down the fucking road people with four-wheel drives parking in the damn ditch i mean it was just the place to be back then so anyhow i lived near cowboys at the time i lived in kennesaw georgia so i lived near cowboys crystal chandelier uh i guess at that time it was still the chandelier so that was my go-to club because I was right there at it, you know. I mean, I could, you know, take a quick cab home or drive up there. If I got too drunk, take a cab home. I could go get my truck the next day. It was very close to my house. That was my go-to place. But occasionally we would saddle up, drive all the way down to uh, Mama's Country Showcase. And the thing about Mama's, okay, Cowboys was such a big place and a big club. I could go into that club and I could have a great night, a night in between, or I could walk out of there fucking alone and go home by myself, right? That was just the dynamics of it. Most of the time I didn't. I mean, I was the fucking king of pulling one night stands. But I never, never at Mama's Country Showcase had a bad night. It was just like the right size club, you know, like a like a medium sized club. And the dynamics of a medium sized club that gets packed out is just a better dynamic for being social and for uh, you know being being able to to see a girl at one point and then find her in the crowd again. Where cowboys was so fucking huge, if you saw a girl at the beginning of the night, you might hunt that whole club all night long never find that bitch because there's so many people there right and if the cl and if the club wasn't packed out that huge building created a different dynamic so at mama's it was just always perfect with the square footage to uh you know party or ratio so i never had a bad night at mama's country showcase it was always a good night okay so one night, it was a, fr a Friday night, me and this dude named Jimmy. And Jimmy's just old redneck. I met him there, and we just kind of became 
uh, buddies to bar hop, you know. So every time I was at Mama's, he was there. We, we would link up. And he was my wingman for a while. God damn, these motherfuckers are noisy. Can't they see I'm fucking trying to film over here? Nah, I'm just kidding. So one night, me and Jimmy were at Mama's, and we met these two sisters. And one was named Trina, and one was named Tiffany. Now, Tiffany was the younger sister. I think she was uh, 18 or 19, and then her older sister, Trina, was like 22. Now, folks, this is back in my 20s, right? So I hooked up with the older sister, Trina, and Jimmy hooked up with Tiffany. But, but that night, we just hung out with them. We just hung out, we danced, we exchanged phone numbers. We both left that night, and we all went our separate ways. That was pretty much it. So the next day, you know, Jimmy calls me up and says, Hey, man, hey, man, these, these chicks from last night want us to meet them at Mama's. They've been calling me. I said, all right, cool, man, I'll meet you there. And back then, we, we went there so much, everybody knew us, so we would show up early, even when the place was closed. They'd let us in, hang out, whatever. But we got there early. Well, by the time the fucking doors opened, my buddy Jimmy was so fucking smashed, he just started drinking way too early. And this dude was fucking just ripped. So, by the time the girls showed up, Jimmy was out on the dance floor. Now look, we're we're fucking mid twenties, right? Mid, yeah, somewhere around there. He's out on the dance floor with about this, you know, fifty-eight year old. Just looks like she's been road hard and put up with her entire life, and he's out true loving this old bitch because he's drunk off his ass. And they're dancing out there, and the next thing you know, they fall down, and they're fucking laid out on the dance floor, making a spectacle, and they're just laughing their ass off, because they're both fucking shit-faced. So, his girl, the, uh, the younger sister, Tiffany, she's just fucking disgusted, right? Because she was looking forward to seeing this dude, all dolled up, she comes up there, <clears throat> and now her fucking date's out there with his grandma, fucking smashed, but, you know goddamn just laid out in the middle of the floor so she's there hanging out with us I'm hooked up with her sister and everything's going good you know Jimmy's doing his thing I'm talking to the two girls trying to get to know Trina and at some point this bitch and folks when, when you go out partying and you go out clubbing okay People do crazy shit, right? People do crazy shit, come off the wall, you think they're talking to a good girl, she turns out to be a fucking coke whore. I mean, this is just a game you play. Going out chasing bitches, especially in the United States, it's a risky fucking business, right? You, you don't know who you're dealing with to start with. Damn, maybe I should tell you a story about... Uh, no. Let me say on this story. Just remind me to tell the story about the bitch with the Cadillac and when she opened up the trunk of the fucking Cadillac. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, anyhow. So with this girl that I'm with, Trina, all of a sudden she just turns to me and she says, what would you say if I told you I wanted to dance with that guy over there? And I'm like, what? You know, I thought this was my girl. I was on a date, right? Just out of the blue, she says, what, 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 what would you think if I, if I told you, what would you say if I told you I wanted to dance with that, that guy over there? And I look over, and you know, some other dude over there. I'm like, well, I tell you go right ahead, but just don't come back to me. <laughs> you know, I'm not an asshole about it. I ain't chasing nobody. I ain't chasing nobody. I ain't fighting over no fucking bitch. There's too many ladies in the world to get into a fight over a chick in a club. If, if, a, if a chick ain't 100% into me in the club, she's free to roam at any fucking moment. She's free to roam at any time. That's just the way I, I live my life. I'm not gonna fucking bow up to nobody over, over some chick, especially some bitch I met in a fucking club. And I'm, I, don't, I just don't get jealous. I just fucking get rid of you. 
So that was a wrong thing to say to me. So it was pretty much over at that point. Once she said that, I was done with her. So I was like, well, I gotta go, you know, I gotta take a piss, I'll be right back. So I go take a piss, I come back out, and my fucking date is dancing with this motherfucker slow song on the dance floor. But like I said, before I left, I pretty much, it was pretty much over the minute she said that. Just uh, dismissed her for lack of motivation, LOM. Lack of dedication, being a cunt. There was about several different violations with her saying that shit, right? So she's on the dance floor. I'm like, well, done with that bitch. So I go, I go walking and then I see her little sister. She had moved over to a table and she's sitting there, you know, kind of like a little tear in her eye. And I was like, yep, that's my girl now. Look over at my buddy Jimmy, drunk on the dance floor. Look at my, my girl, her older sister, who is uh, dancing with some other dude. It's time to switch gears. So I swooped down on her, on her younger sister, and we hit it off. We were having a great fucking time. Our personalities clicked. You know, she, she was, I mean, shit, she was a few years older than me, not too much, but I think she was 19 and I was mid-20s, whatever. So we just fucking hit it off. And her sister tried to come back over there and talk to me, and I'm like, no, babe, I'm sorry, we're, we're done. We're done. You need to go talk to your dance partner out there. So I'm done with you. Just ain't going to work. So she got pissed off and stormed off. And at the end of the night, at the end of the night, I, I told uh, Tiffany, I said, hey, look, you going home with me or are you going home with your sister? And she said, I'm going home with you. And I said, well, you want me to tell her or are you going to tell her? Because <laughs> she, she's obviously going to get pissed off. She's like, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell her. Just, just wait right here. I'm going to tell her. So she goes over and finds her sister, and she's like, hey, I'm going home with him. And there was a little little, little bit of cat fight, a little bit of jealousy. Uh, but the girl held her ground, and she told her sister, she's like, no, you know, you, you threw the motherfucker away. You're with this dude. You know, my date's out with this fucking grandma. And so, you know, I'm going home with Mark. And so they left, like, in it. And when they parted ways, there, were, there was a, a riff. And she came over and she said, let's go. I'm like, hey, I don't mean to piss your sister off. She's like, I don't care. Let's go. So the girl went home with me. And I actually ended up, you know, hanging out with her and dating her for quite some time. And so that's, that's how we got together. I initially was with her pseudo supposed to be with her older sister so she became my girlfriend for a while well her and her sister lived in this little small one bedroom duplex when I would get off work I would go straight over to their duplex and you know me and her being there knocking boots in the fucking bedroom and her sister would come home well her sister liked to go to the gym but she couldn't get into the bedroom to get her clothes and take a shower because we're in there fucking knocking boots, right? So after like three or four days of this going on and her sister fucking bitching at us, you know, she got so pissed off when she came home, she just fucking opened the door, you know, and we're at, we're fucking butt naked going at it like porn stars. And her sister comes in there and just starts fucking cussing us. But she wasn't she didn't cuss us because we were, you know, she was jealous. She just came in there and she was like, listen, I'm tired of you two being in here. You know, goddamn fucking all afternoon. When I come home, I need to change my clothes so I can go to the gym and work out. So I don't give a shit. Just don't lock the door where I can get in here and change my goddamn clothes and get to the fucking gym. You know, I'm tired of this shit. And so... After she bitches us out, I mean, I didn't really even, I mean, we might have slowed down a little bit, fucking looked up at her, but we didn't stop the action. So she strips off her fucking clothes, you know, fucking butt naked, goes in there, fucking takes a quick shower, gets her fucking gym gear on, because she, she really wasn't going up there to work out. She was going up there to fucking socialize and be seen. I mean, who the fuck needs to take a shower and get dolled up before they go to the fucking gym and sweat all over the place? But I just remember sitting there banging out this girl's little sister, right? 
and looking over at her, who's my original date, and she's there butt naked, in and out of the fucking bathroom, getting her fucking tight, you know, spandex, whatever the fuck she was wearing. And I just remember like, God damn, life is fucking good for me. Life is good for me. The only thing that would be better is if I could get her sister in on the action, you know, and be rolling deuces. So this was just commonplace. Every day, me and her would be over there fucking knocking boots. Sister comes home. We didn't even close the door anymore after that. After she bitched us out, we didn't even close the door. It was just commonplace. We'd be knocking boots. Her sister does her thing. Nobody ca nobody cares. It was cool. So it was a cool relationship. Now, the thing that really made me like this girl. Okay, one day she's over at my place. And at that time I was living over um well, I was living over not not in the place I was living next to uh, Cowboys in Kennesaw, but I was living close to Kennesaw. And she's over at my place one day, spending the night. And she says, she just comes right out of the blue, and she says, she says, I want you to screw my best friend. I'm like, what? What? What are, you, what are you talking about? No, no, no. I thought it was a trap, right? I thought it was a setup. And this girl, now she's, she's like 19, but she just had this wisdom. And she's like, look. She said, I know you like the party. And I really like you. I, I, want, I, want, you to, I want us to stay together. And she said, I know you're always going to try to chase other girls. But she said, if I let you screw my best friend, then you won't be out there chasing other girls. And I was like, still, you know, I was like, this is a trap, man. Don't fall for it. And she was serious. And she said, look, here's the deal, okay? Me and my best friend, we've been best friends for a long time. You know, we're very close. I told her about you. She doesn't have a boyfriend. You know, she's all alone over there. And we talked about it. And I told her. And after she thought about it, she said, okay. You know, we can sort of be this little trio. And the shit is just getting better by the minute. And I'm like, God damn, I love this girl, right? Now, at that point, I don't know what her friend looks like. But she gives me this warning. She says, listen. You know, you, we, we can be together. You can screw her anytime you want. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't care. I mean, I want to make you happy, but I'm going to tell you this. If you ever screw my sister, I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. Uh, all right. Okay. That's, that's a pretty good deal. And she was like, no, you listen to me. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I will fucking stab you. I will. I will fucking kill you if you ever fuck my sister. <laughs> and I was like, all right, cool. It's, it, let's, let's shake on it. Let's fucking write the contract. I am cool with that motherfucking agreement. And then that night, uh, she, well, she called her friend. That night, her friend showed up over there with a piece of shit car. And then the three of us fucking jumped in my truck and went to Mama's. Fucking party down and like it was just a great relationship with this girl. You know, no telling where she's at these days. Shit, I don't know. That's a long time ago to remember. But I certainly will never forget Tiffany and Trina and my buddy Jimmy and that night at Mama's Country Showcase where circumstances just turned. Where I ended up with a pretty good little girlfriend for a while. And I'm still married at the time to my first wife. <laughs> but that's another aspect to the story, my friends. Anyhow, thought I'd share that with you. A little bit of entertainment. Maybe it got your blood pumping. I don't know. But shout out to Tiffany and Trina and Jimmy. Wherever you guys are at in the world. Uh, you know, you wish you could go back and see these people like that that were, you know, 
in your life during a short period of time. I, I think I was with her about six months, maybe eight months, somewhere in there. Wish I could visit those folks and just reminisce about the good times and especially those couple of nights. Fucking great time, folks. I forgot to tell the rest of the story. I started telling a long ass story uh, because uh, because Joe Diffie, Joe Diffie died. So I tell you about the story of how I met Tiffany, my, a little bit about my relationship with her. But the point of the story was, I got thrown out of a Joe Diffie concert one time at Mama's, Mama's Country Showcase. And it was one of those things where I was actually innocent. Well, I was, but I wasn't. <clears throat> Back then, at that particular club, you could get in if you were 18, but you obviously couldn't drink till you're 21. So there was a mixed crowd, you know, and they gave out armbands for, I don't know, people old, over 18, or excuse me, over 21. Anyhow, what? Yeah, that's what it was. If you were over 21, you got an armband. You could drink. If you were, you know, 18 to 21, you didn't get the armband. You couldn't drink. And they were actually actively, you know, the bouncers were actively, uh, you know, trying to police that. That's their job. That's what they're supposed to do. So it was a Joe Diffie concert. And me and Tiffany rolled down there. Excited about seeing Joe Diffie. Now listen, I saw, I've seen Joe Diffie several times, but this particular uh, concert, you know, we got there early. We were uh, just looking for a great night, and during this concert, I say during, <laughs> it was uh, either the house band or the opening band was on. This is before Joe Diffie came out for this particular concert. And I, I had a drink. Now, usually I just drink beer. But I had some type of big fruity drink or something, a margarita or something with a big old straw in there. I just, you know, decided to switch it up. So I'm sitting there and I'm already, I'm already tanked up a little bit. And I'm talking. I got, I'm holding my drink in my left hand and I'm talking to my buddy or somebody over here to my right. It's, you know, Tiffany's with me. And she, like I said, she's 19. She's not 21. I was over 21 and she wasn't. So I'm standing here like this, talking to somebody. And all of a sudden from behind me, I, I feel this fucking bear of a hand grab me right here on the shoulder. And it wasn't no small hand. I mean, when, that, when that dude put his, put his fucking hand on my shoulder, he just gave me a little bit of grip and he said something like it was either boy you got to go or son you got to go and I'm like what the fuck and I turn over I turn around it's one of the it's it's one of the the biggest fucking bouncers you know that I've, I've ever seen a dude look like a fucking bear his hand was about as big as a fucking bear bear paw on me and I look, and he's like, you know, you gotta go. I said, why, what the hell did I do? He said, you're letting your girl drink out of your drink. And I look over, and I had that straw, like, you know, sticking up like this, and Tiffany was sitting over there fucking drinking out of my goddamn drink in fucking plain view. I didn't even know she was doing it. You know, if, I, if she wanted to drink, you gotta kinda look left, look right, and make sure the bouncers aren't fucking looking at you. But I was just holding that drink, talking, to these folks here, and that bitch was just sucking away on that margarita or that damn whatever the hell I had as a fruity drink. And so I'm just like looking at this drink with that fucking straw facing her, and I'm looking at him, and I'm like, come on, man, it's a Joe Diffie concert. This dude's about to take stage, come on. He's like, nah, I'm sorry, you know, we got to go. So I'm like, damn, man, come on. I'm looking over at Tiffany and she's just like looking at me like, you know, I, I didn't blame her. I mean, come on. But anyhow, <clears throat> I got this fucking drink. 
I'm on the way out the door with this dude with his fucking bear paw on my shoulder, escorting me out. And I mean, I wasn't giving him no trouble. I was just kind of like pleading, come on, man, please, please let me watch a fucking Joe Diffie concert. I promise you, this bitch won't be drinking out of my drink no more. Come on, man, it wasn't intentional. You know, come on. Nah. So they threw me out. <clears throat> they threw me and her out. Which I was pissed off about that part. Up until they didn't just throw me out. They took me out to the to the uh, the cop, the DeKalb County uh, police officers that were working the door, and turned me over to them. And at that point, shit got real. Because he's like, yeah, we saw this guy letting her drink out of his drink. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute now. That's not exactly what happened. Okay? Um, let's talk about this, fellas. <laughs> and, man, they fucking, they threatened me. I mean, they, they didn't want to fuck with me. They're working an off-duty gig, making cash money. They don't want to fuck with me and this girl on these bullshit. Uh, it ain't worth the paperwork. Trust me. I didn't know that at the time. But they fuck with us, you know, let me see her license, let me see her license, you know, what, should we take her to jail? So, they got my attention. It's like old uh, Jackie Gleason on uh, Smoking the Bandit. That's what I call an attention getter. Those motherfuckers have my attention, I, I assure you. And after they uh, gave me a good scare, I was about to go to the slammer because this bitch was sucking on my fucking margarita. They let us go. And anyhow, so I got I got thrown out of a Joe Diffie concert. Mama's Country Showcase. Um I think that was I I don't know, fuck it's too long ago for me to remember years, folks, but it was back in his heyday when he was touring around. Everybody loved the songs. Um so he's 61 years old. Uh, rest in peace, Mr. Joe Diffie. You know, you certainly played a part uh, in my life and my, you know, listening to you on the radio and seeing you in concert and getting getting thrown out of one of your concerts and almost getting locked up for, you know, giving my 19-year-old girlfriend alcohol. You know, just good times, man. Good times back then. And so may you rest in peace and, uh, you know, thoughts go out to your family. Uh, but 61, folks, according to the news, he died of uh, complications of COVID-19, Chinese bat research virus. So I, I, I just, I forgot yesterday. Today is, uh, what the hell is today? Today's Wednesday. Um, but I was like, damn, I'm chopping the video. And I said, hell, I never told the point of the story. I started talking about Joe Diffie, and then I start telling about Tiffany. But the point was, you know, Tiffany got me thrown out of a Joe Diffie concert one time. And it was just a memorable night. You sitting there partying one minute, getting thrown out by the bouncers, the Knicks, fucking facing the cops, you know. <laughs> uh, Shit happens. All right, folks. So let me let me get this clip in the video, and we'll go on with uh, with the day or well, yesterday's day. All right, folks. Forrest G. Looking sharp this morning. About to mind comb his hair real good, and he's uh, chewing on her cell phone for some reason. That's already great. <laughs> Beautiful morning, my friends. He's watching his, uh, that dude's watching his stuff, and I got the beautiful Helen of Troy over here. My goodness, what's going on, baby, with that? And, and we got another round of chicken curry? Yeah. All right, let's, let's take a close up and see what she's got going on. Oh, yeah. And can you show us what you have in the, in the cast iron? Okay. Yeah, let me see it. Lift the lid on that. Let me see what's over there. Oh, my goodness. Got some chicken frying, folks. My goodness. I got this girl. I know a girl. And she don't want to work because she twerk, twerk, twerk. She twerk, twerk, twerk. 
Folks, life is good. Look at this, beautiful lady, man in the kitchen, beautiful lady over here, taking care of my son. I'm healthy, I'm upright, I'm uh, semi-sober. Let me show you what's going on up here, folks. Ooh. Check my inventory. All right, so I'm down to uh, I had three quarters of a big bottle of Jim Bean, full bar bottle of Bacardi Limon. I got a full bottle of Captain, and I'm looking at an additional two of the bigger bottles of Jim Beam and then two of the smaller. And then I got this rock gut shit over here in absolute reserve. I don't want to ever have to taste that shit again. Oh, excuse me, baby. All right, she's adding a little milk here, folks. Man, that smells coming off of there. Wonderful. Got some rice going on. I'm back in my inventory. I'm trying to burn my belly here. Maybe tonight I bust out some of that Bacardi Limon for Helen of Troy, because she does like to partake and drink. Luckily, Fuddy Mai doesn't drink, but Helen drinks, and the problem with this one is when she drinks too much, she starts running that mouth. She starts yak yakking. She likes to blah, 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 blah. But that's okay. When she run that mouth, I just have to tax her a little bit. Mmm, looking delicious over there, baby. And she's been cutting up garlic, cutting up the onions and potatoes. A little bit of coffee in the Yeti cup. All right, I gotta get back to editing this video, my friends, so I can get the uh, and get it posted from yesterday. Buddy man. I'm trying to make a video, you got your ass hanging out. I'm sure Jesus won't mind that though. Right, folks, so here we go with my little experiment. Ah, don't touch it, baby, it's hot. Right, it's a hot day here in the Philippines. I've had this, I've had this, uh, I've had this pan out in the sun for several hours. I just want to see, can, I fry an egg on this lodge. This is the, the lid to the 3.2 quart cast iron combo cooker. And I don't know if it's hot enough, but everything out here gets so damn hot during the day, I think I can fry an egg on it. And it is hot. So I gotta do it quick or this damn camera's gonna do a thermal shutdown. And I hope I'm recording. Buddy man. I want ladies, they don't believe me. They don't want to be out here in the sun, but I want them to watch. Ready? I don't know if it's hot enough or not. It's not sizzling. We're gonna give it the old college try though. Now look at my look at my wife here, okay? Filipinas hate the sun, folks. They absolutely hate it. Alright, let me get back on task. Again, because I don't, I don't think this, uh, I don't think this camera is going to last very long before it does a thermal shutdown. And actually, we got a couple clouds that came over that may save it. Oh so, my God! Here we go. Not the key. That's not working. I'm sure that's not working, King Marquitos. You don't think it's hot enough? All right, I'll just, I'll just do the one. We'll see if we can get the one to cook. Look, Okay, look, now get out of the way. You're in my shade. You're cutting off my heat. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna see if this thing cooks at all. Maybe it's just not hot enough, but I thought it would be hot enough to cook it. Let's give it, give it a moment here, see if we, you can get a tune out of this trombone, my friends. Hey, I got that we buy a half cake. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Just spread it around right there. Yeah, see if it goes. I'm gonna put my, 
I gotta put a rag over this camera or this camera's gonna melt. Hopefully I don't mess up the scenery. Now Fuddy Mike keeps putting her hand on here. Test it, baby. Tell me if it's hot. Yeah, put your hand on there. Now, now put your cheek on there. <laughs> put, just put your cheek on there and tell me if you think it's hot, okay? Can you do that for me? She's over here laughing at me, saying this egg is not gonna cook. Saying that the pan is not that hot. Well, just just put your cheek on there. Matter of fact, let me let me put it on your ass cheek. And you tell me if it's hot. You cook. I think it might cook. <laughs> what you think? It's cooking a little bit. Look, it's cooking a little bit. If I mind, if this egg cooks, you know you're going to eat this egg. When I told these ladies about this little experiment, the only damn thing that they asked is who's going to get to eat the egg. They don't give a shit about my experiment. They just want to eat the egg. Huh? All right, folks. It doesn't seem to be cooking as planned. But I'm not, I'm not done with it yet. Now, folks, I didn't, I didn't show the old gentleman, but... Fatima went down there and she, she wanted to give the old gentleman some food, which she did, and he quickly disappeared. And he'd been sitting out here. You see him sit out here all day, he don't get no food. But she wanted to come down and get these hot cakes. So she's getting some hot cakes. And and we, uh, we uh, gave him the uh, the curry. So he got a good meal. Curry, a big thing of rice, and that joker just said salamat and disappeared. Um you got a little little action going on. There's there's the old lady picking up them hot cakes, trying to fatten up her her booty. And it looks like down there we got the got the lady on the bicycle with the chicken and the fish. Kind of a busy day on Times Square over there today. Today's Tuesday. That's the day that we can get out. I was gonna go out today, and I actually got invited to. Uh, to roll with some friends who have a vehicle, but I think I've got the, I think, all I gotta do is pay my internet bill and I think I figured out how to pay it online. If not, I'll hump it to 7-Eleven on Thursday. And this little egg experiment, it's not finished yet, but it is not near as high as I thought it would be. It might be a fail, hashtag fail. Man, I'm still gonna cook that motherfucker. I'm just gonna take it in there and stick it on the induction burner, fire it up. Oh my gosh. Of course it's cooking, baby. <laughs> of course it's cooking. Just give it some time. I saw the old Kuya, he was excited about his uh, food, huh? Yeah, he didn't steal, he didn't. He didn't stay around very long. The minute you gave it to him, zoom, he zoomed back there. Now, folks, we we don't know we don't know if the old gentleman eats or not. I mean, he's always hanging out here. He is skinny as a rail. Uh, next next time I will get him on video. He's, he's an interesting looking old dude. But that that's good that she gave him some curry to chow down on, and that and that curry is delicious. So he he is definitely going to enjoy that meal back there. But he certainly didn't hang around. All right, good job, Fatima. Are you gonna share the hot cakes with Helen? Yeah, she's eating now. She's eating now? Okay, good, good job, baby. I don't think it's gonna cook, folks. I think the only thing that I have cooked is this damn camera. But that's okay, because I'm using this old RX100 piece of shit that I'm not real fond of. So I said, hell, if it gets melted in the sun, during my solar egg cooking experiment, experiment here, so be it. I don't know. I just really thought that some bitch was hotter than it was. It was one of them things, you know. Thought like lit. Thought you had to fart, had to shit, shit your pants. Getting little bubbles. This ain't, ain't hot enough. Alright, folks, believe it or not, it looks like it's starting to bubble. 
Maybe I just need to wait a while. And there was a uh, cloud overhead. But it looks like it, it looks like it's starting to bubble. Might be able to get a tune out of this little trombone. Yeah, that egg's almost done, baby. You guys can you guys can 50 50 it because it's gonna be delicious. Already eating now, man. That's so delicious. What what'd you eat? <laughs> uh, how was the pancakes? Good. Looks good? How many did you ladies eat? Two each? My god. Look at these beautiful ladies, folks. Just hanging out, chilling, looking beautiful, eating pancakes all day. <laughs> chilling like villains during the lockdown. Quarantine. I'm quarantined in here with two Filipinas. <laughs> Babe, what you laughing at? What you laughing at, girl? Huh? It's a, it's not done Looks yet. Like jelly. Well, it's, it's it's not done. It needs a it needs a, another 10, 20 minutes on there. Don't worry about it. Is this a jello or jelly or just egg? Hey, it's a egg flavored jello. You know you ladies gonna eat it anyhow. You just trying to figure out how what you're gonna mix it with. My yeah, God, folks, you see you see the stress I'm under with these chicks. Out there inspecting my solar egg, my solar cooked egg on the on the combo cooker. What happened to your egg? <laughs> the egg is still cooking. I'm gonna go check it right now. I know you. I know you ladies are hungry. You're gonna try to take a bite out of this egg. Yeah. How many eggs you cook? I just won. My goodness. Don't don't get jealous. You got a you got a fifty fifty. But <laughs> well, you if you guys want to fight over it. Uh, I'm sure my subscribers would love to see you fight over this egg because it's going to be delicious. <laughs> and folks, if you had to put money on one of these ladies in an all-out UFC, WWF, I mean, I'm talking all-out brawl, no holes bar. I think I'd probably put my money on Helen. Oh no! But my fighting back. Get her, baby. Get her. Get her. Hey, don't knock the TV over. My God, it's pandemonium up in here. <laughs> ladies, ladies, easy. There's, there's, both of you. There's no reason. There's no reason to fight over this solar cooked egg. My God, if it's that delicious, I'll cook you ladies another one. <laughs> My God, folks, I'm over here fighting over this damn egg. This, I'm telling you it's gonna be delicious. Take a look at this motherfucker here. Let me just show you what we're working with. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, look at that, hmm, hmm, them ladies are going to be loving this, but to be honest with you, that goddamn thing smells like rotten fish, but you know what, they like the smell of rotten fish, because they eat fucking dried fish, holy shit, but look folks, it's hot, this damn thing is hot, that's fucking hot. And you look at that straight up sun right there. My God, it'll melt my camera if I leave it out here. But uh, this little experiment was a fail, but I'm gonna try to sell it to the ladies in a few minutes. Okay, so it's, it's still cooking. It needs a few more minutes, okay? All right, just a few more minutes and then uh, and they'll be ready to go. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's real nice. Oh, that's real nice. And folks, to be honest, that smells like rotten fucking fish. That's the most rank smell 
It's it's not even a rotten egg smell. It's a fucking it's it's a goddamn rotten fish smell. <clears throat> but I'm about to try to sell it to the ladies. Shit, that's hot. I don't know how the ladies hold this. For me, that's fucking hot. That's why. I, <clears throat> that's why I thought these lady that this shit would cook. Okay, ladies, let's go. I'm about to serve it up. Hey, Force G. Take a look at that, baby. Honey, what's that? That's an egg on Jimmy. Baby, this this is an egg, but it smells like fish. <laughs> Take a look at this. Ladies, hold on. You, you don't even know what you're... Ladies, come on over here. Take this out. Helen, come here, baby. Take a good look at that egg right there. Baby, that's a, that's a fried egg. Take a look, Helen. How's it look, baby? Okay, just take it. Wait a minute. A few minutes ago, you ladies were, were over here fighting. You were doing UFC over this egg. Maybe this is this is cooked by the sun. Yeah. 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 Okay. So who who's who's gonna who's gonna taste this first? <laughs> but it's, it smells like dried fish, and I don't like dried fish. Are you sure? <laughs> so nobody now. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Now no, nobody wants to fight over my my fried egg. Wait, where are you going, ladies? Dry fish. <laughs> Folks, man, these are some fair weather friends. I I did all this work to cook them this beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful fried egg right there, and nobody wants to taste that thing. Are you, are you, baby? I wouldn't do it. I'm just messing with you. No, I don't want to go to the hospital. Ah, don't put that in your mouth. I'm just fucking with you. If you if you eat that, you ain't gonna shit right for two weeks. I'll be over at the hospital buying antibiotics. I don't recommend it. Or G said he wasn't eating that shit. All right, folks, just one last look at that. Hey, you never know. You never know. You know what? Hashtag fail. Hashtag fail on the uh, on the sun. It just wasn't hot enough. I could have sworn that shit was hot enough. It was. It's hot as hell out there. But it's not hot enough. You know. I gotta back off and punt. Uh, come up with a different solution. Damn, whoo, that shit stinks. <laughs> Fatima, can you do me a favor and clean that up for me, baby? Oh. Hurry up. If you don't clean it up now, I'm afraid it's going to season in that cast iron. Everything I cook going to taste like them. Uh, bangus. Thank you, baby. Shit, folks, back to the drawing board on that one. Helen, you sure you don't want to try that egg? Why not? You eat balut, right? Yeah, but I don't like your cook. <laughs> Baby, that's much better than balut. Yeah, that's better than balut. <laughs> I like balut. No, I'll kid. I'll get you ladies a balut tonight, but you can't kiss me for two days. Two days? Okay. <laughs> Alright, folks, Filipino wife number one to fire this mofo up right here. I don't even know what the hell we're cooking because I'm drunk as Cooter Brown. Give you a quick look at uh, Tom's Square. It's uh, past curfew, so there ain't shit going on. Beep, beep, beep. Can you do a dance for us? Listen, it's a slow song. You ready? I know a girl, and she don't want to work because she twerk, twerk, twerk. Show that booty. Twerk, twerk, twerk. Baby, that's not twerking. 
God damn, it looked like you were in an ad for a JCPenney fucking commercial. Ain't nothing but straight up drama going on with these bitches. Been locked down with these hoes. I don't even know who started the charcoal chimney because it wasn't me. If you drunk. <laughs> Mm -hmm. What were you saying, baby? Because I didn't, I don't listen to you anyhow. Yes, I got the beautiful Fatima rocking out the grill over here. Wow, wow Fatima. Who's over here? Baby, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. I've been jet flying, limousine, riding women loving. Woo, that he must want the nature boy. Fucking drinking my Captain Coke. Wait a minute, is this Jim Beam or Captain? Hanging out here with two of the baddest looking bitches in the world, even though they're both fucking pissed off at me. This one is pissed off at me. Let, let me just be honest with my subscribers. My wife is pissed off at me. Her dynamics about this relationship that's not perfect. This is the most important thing right here. 